The Celtics come out here on ESPN versus the Milwaukee Bucks, one of the most anticipated games of the year, at least, you know, as a Celtic fan. We came out and showcased why we still are one of the best teams in the NBA, even after a very disappointing loss to the Charlotte Hornets in overtime. That game was horrible. Don't get me started. Now, the Celtics did win this game, but... I want you guys to understand this was not the greatest game by Boston. Yes, we came out in the first quarter and dominated them 29-17. In the second quarter, we put up 38 points. But they were, you know, right there with us for the majority of this fourth quarter. And they killed us in the clutch when it mattered the most, outscoring us 37-25 to in the fourth quarter. I also want to point out the fact they took 101 shots today. We had 84. That cannot happen. The fact that we won this game and they had 17 more shot attempts is absurd. And they shot 44.6% from the field. Listen, a win is a win. I'm taking this win every single day of the week. And you know, when we look back seven months from now, four months from now, whatever it may be, we're not going to say, oh, we need we need to do that better. We're not going to look, oh, we only won by three. No, we're not going to look at that. But when we look at here today, we want to talk post game. When we want to talk about things that we need to do better. The first thing that comes to my mind Stop turning over the damn ball. We had 15 turnovers. You know what that does? That gives them 15 more shot attempts than us. And look at they had 17 more than us tonight. We need to limit the turnovers. They had nine turnovers. We had 15. Obviously, that is not good. Another thing I want to point out today, Celtics Nation, welcome back to the channel, by the way. Do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, join the family, because you know what? This is your place for everything Celtics, man. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be a Celtics fan because I really feel like this team is special. There is a lot of room to grow. There's a lot of things that we need to do differently. A lot of things that we need to improve on. Turnovers are one. Uh, another thing is, man, can we stop hating players after a couple of bad games? Um, and you know what? I do it too. I do it too. You know, uh, Sam Hauser, Payton Pritchard to start the year were terrible. They're starting to get it going. Um, so shout out to those guys. We know they can get it going. We know they, they are getting it going now. And if they keep continue to play like this, we're going to be extremely tough to beat. But more importantly, Jalen Brown, man, I've been seeing nothing but hate and hate and hate. And I do stream every single Celtics game. So I see it a bunch in my chats. People saying, wow, Jalen, the most overpaid player in the NBA. Guys, listen, you have to understand Jalen is at points and times. He's the fourth best scorer on this roster. But that's all matchup dependent. There's times where he's the best scorer, and we saw it tonight. 10 of 16 from the field, uh, 26 points was overall uh, one of the major reasons why we were able to win this game. And if you guys haven't noticed yet, him and Porzingis are a deadly duo. That is the duo. They love each other. You can tell they have fun with each other. And their pick and roll game is, quite frankly, unstoppable. And I love it so far. Jalen had an unbelievable game. He's going to have some bad games. He's going to have some good games. But the fact that he, or the fact that the Celtics brought in a guy like Chris Ash Porzingis, who can do many different things. He can, you know, pick and roll. He can pick and pop. He can, you know, do get some backdoor cuts to the lane. Uh, he can do a bunch of other things. And when we have mismatches, we're going to attack the mismatches. And something that, or someone, I should say, who has to sacrifice is Jalen Brown. Unfortunately, he's not going to be a 29 points per game scorer. He's not. And if you throw him on, you know, let's say the Wizards, he's probably going to average 30 points a game and you guys will be sitting here saying, oh, this man is nasty. But the fact that he is, you know, on some nights our best scorer, on some nights our second best scorer, on some nights the third, and on other nights he's the fourth or fifth best scorer in the lineup, it's matchup dependent. And the fact that he's sitting here, he's not complaining about getting less shots this year. He is being a team player. And that's what you want in one of your superstars. So shout out to Jalen Brown. Had a big night tonight on national television and absolutely was amazing. Now, another thing I want to point out, guys, another negative thing here. Listen, I don't want to harp on all the negatives because overall we played a relatively good game, but I kind of just want to point out the the areas where we need to improve the most it's offensive rebounding we they they gave or we gave up 13 offensive rebounds tonight 13 and this is not something that you know it's every now and then we give up a ton of offensive rebounds no we allow a lot of offensive rebounds um we rank right in the middle of the pack in offensive rebounds um allowed so we we just we, we need to be better we need to rebound the ball we need to box out we need to just be better but overall listen I'll take this win. I think the fourth quarter, we played tremendously bad. 
Uh, but overall, the first quarter, we came out on fire. Jalen had eight points in the first quarter. Um, he looked really good. In the second quarter, we dropped 38 points, but our defense didn't look so hot. They, they had 36, but, you know, that's to be expected. The Bucks coming into this game were number four in the NBA in terms of points per game, and they scored 116. So we held them under the mark, which is good. Love to see that. Um, I, I think we did a really good job on Giannis, shot 7 of 20 from the field. Um, I thought we did a great job on Damian Lillard for the first three quarters. And then, you know, it's Dame time. He gets hot, and when he gets hot, it's pretty much hard to guard him. And that's what happened here tonight. Hit a bunch of threes here late, or maybe three threes late in the game. He looked good late in the game. That's a major reason why they came back. Uh, so, shout out to Damian Lillard. And then, off their bench, they didn't have really anything going for him. But... That's where the difference is made. Um, our bench looked amazing. Guys, check this out. Sam Hauser, 10 points. Al Horford, 11 points. Peyton Pritchard, 10 points. We had, let's see, four, seven guys score 10 or more points. And you know what? The one guy who didn't, a little bit surprising, Drew Holiday. Now, listen, a lot of guys want to say Drew Holiday is washed. Listen, he's fine. We don't need him. Again, again, guys, when you have Derek Way, when you have Jalen, when you have Jason, when you have Porzingis, you don't need Drew Holiday to put up 15 points. You don't need him to put 12 points. Quite frankly, you don't need them to put up six points and we can beat one of the best teams in the NBA in the in the Milwaukee Bucks. So listen, don't panic. Drew Holiday is fine. I mean, on the season right now, maybe he's not doing what you guys thought he would, averaging about 13 points a game, 7.4 rebounds, 5.1 assists. Man, I'll take that every single day of the week. I'll take that every single game, man. That is that is a good stat line if you ask me, is the fifth, fourth, third scoring option at times. That's not bad at all. Um, you know, his shooting splits maybe could be better. He's shooting about 43% from the field, which is a career low. Um, basically, I mean, basically quite a, a career low. But overall, it's going to get better. Remember, he's getting acclimated here in Boston. He was traded right before the start of, of camp. So he hasn't had a full three months here in Boston. So let him get acclimated. Other than that, Tatum struggled a little bit shooting the ball. Still had 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 23 points. Remember, Porzingis and Jalen Brown, that duo is looking elite right now. I'm loving that. Give me your give me your grade for this game right now. Celtics did win this game, but it wasn't as, as good as I thought it was going to be. You know, we look like we're going to blow them out, and we always seem to let them back into the game late. So give me your grade for this game by Boston. Um, I'm going to give them a B plus. I thought there was really good times. I thought there was really bad times. We went three deep. I really like what the bench did today. I think Sam Hauser, Al Horford, and Payne Pritchard did such an amazing job overall in this game, hitting shots and keeping the energy up when we needed it the most. So shout to the bench. I was very critical of them early in the season, and they have done nothing but prove me wrong since Al Horford in this game. Very quiet, 11 points, 7 rebounds, or actually 8 rebounds, and 6 assists as well. He was lights out. Jalen, 26 and 8. Uh, Chris Stapps had 21 and 6. Overall, I thought we played well. Um, I think there's a lot of things that we need to improve on. Giving up offensive rebounds. Um, we need to rebound the ball. We need to stop turning over the ball. And we need to just be play 48 minutes of good basketball. And this team will be extremely lethal in the future. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new, guys. Follow the podcast on Spotify, wherever you're listening. Spotify, YouTube. Make sure you guys join the family. And leave me a comment. What do you guys? How are you guys feeling right now? Where do the Celtics need to improve the most? We gave up 101 shots and took 84. The fact that we won this game is crazy, um, but a win is a win. We'll take it every day of the week. Let's move on to Orlando, who's quite frankly having a hell of a season, coming off a huge win over the defending champion Denver Nuggets.